is up, everybody? Welcome into the pregame. We buy you. What? A what? <laughs> what a weird start. Monday energy here. Let's shake it all off, guys. Come on, don't listen to D Line Co. He, he he knows what? not what he says. Well, I don't. I don't know what I say. What are we talking about? Now uh, we're gonna talk about the Denver Nuggets. Uh, don't. Uh, but we're first presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Download, use promo code DMVR, and join us. Bring some vibes, guys. We need collective energy um, that we send out to the universe for us to start winning some bets, getting on track for this Nuggets team, when going you, on a run you, in the absence of Michael Porter. You remember even like my mom, like she just got like more and more like into crystals and more. Oh, spiritual. I love crystals. <laughs> so like you're just, you're just like more energy <laughs> focused. Crystals. Oh man, <laughs> crystals and candles and um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. You know, I'm in though. By the, I don't know if you, I made that clear. I'm very in. You're very this. in. <laughs> you're very in. Um, guys, we have a good show for you today. We're going to talk about fun. You guys remember uh, that? No. Do you guys remember back when we used to have fun? Uh, when did, like, when, when did that happen? <laughs> it was, it's been <laughs> a couple years. But before you got here. Yeah, before uh, you got Actually, <laughs> now that you mention it, wow. Wait. Maybe I know what the culprit is here. Uh, we're going to talk about fun. We're going to play a little buy or sell. We're going to, of course, do our betting. But we begin tonight with game notes and the most important notes of all. Of course, today was all about in the pregame commentary with Michael Malone. It was all about Michael Porter. I guess that's not true. There were some questions asked about the Miami Heat. But everybody was itching to know right off the top about Michael Porter Jr.'s return to the Denver Nuggets, his status. And what do we find out? Michael Malone says he will not be back for the foreseeable future. Ah. The foreseeable future. Oh he he did walk it back. I want to say he did walk it back. He was he said that early on, and then somebody said, "Hey, what does that mean, foreseeable future?" And he said, "Look, it could be a week. It could be longer. We don't know." Th- but that's what he was trying to say: is we don't know at this point when he's going to be returning. They, of course, were quick to rule him out yesterday when the report came out. It didn't say questionable, didn't say doubtful, it just said out. So, just reading between the lines here, guys, it sounds like he is going to be out for it at least a week. I mean, we don't know. They talked about some more treatments they're going to be doing, some more imaging they're going to be doing, and then they'll make a decision from there. But certainly the tone made it sound like Michael Porter's out for at least a little bit. Dev, how do you feel about this injury now, and and how do you kind of feel about the situation with the Nuggets? I mean, I I feel like it's a a wait-and-see approach. It is difficult when you say the foreseeable future because, I mean, you're saying we don't really have answers Right. right now. We don't actually know. So... Um, no timetable. That's basically what he means is there is no timetable. Yep, yep. And and mm. just the idea of the Nuggets, you know, not playing with, you know, Jamal Murray. And now they're, you know, two of their, their franchise players are now not playing for the foreseeable future. You There's not, there's not like, a lot of positivity around it. You just want to hear something positive come about it. Um, so I guess right now you just kind of have to cross your fingers and hope that, you know, things weren't too bad. Yeah, it's worked for this franchise pretty well. Cross your fingers. <laughs> so, um, can we get somebody that can foresee? Can we get Ariana? Are you oh, now man. that you're into crystals? Can uh, you foresee? Well, yeah, the crystals are very unclear <laughs> very about this murky. one. Very you need better uh, crystals. They're not like, that's crystal cloud- clear. That's oh, for sure. Oh, Cloudy yeah, crystals. Uh, it's terrifying. I'm absolutely terrified by this. Like, yeah. you know, it's a knee. It's uh, whatever. Like, you're like, okay, uh, it's his back. I'm terrified. Like, And especially because it was his back. I mean, this is the thing we're all afraid of. You're right. I mean, there are a lot of injuries that could mean a lot of bad things, but the back with him is most especially interesting. Here's what I'll say. And we talked to, uh, talked to some different people to kind of get opinions. What could it be? What could it be? This or that. It's almost too reckless at this moment to speculate. For sure. But, um, you know. We the, can talk about our fears here, though. We can talk about our fears <laughs> and our hopes. Um, I, I agree, though, that it's concerning, and, and it does more than anything – feel like he's probably going to miss the rest of this homestand at at a minimum. Yeah. And maybe, you know, who knows, a month, two months, who knows. But at at least it's going to linger through a portion of the season where you look at it and go, the bench hasn't been great. All of a sudden, you know, now now a guy from the bench moves up, a guy from out of the rotation moves to the bench. Like, all of this stuff has an effect, and it's definitely concerning. Michael, uh, Michael Malone had a, I would call it a somber tone. To, I, every time I say I know, somber now, I want to say somber. I can't. <laughs> the two words mean the same to me now. He had a somber tone in that he definitely was, hey, we got to support him, and he knows we, we love him, and we're all there for him, and this or that. And, you know, even just that tone is like, oh, God, like because he needs it. He needs your support and stuff. So um, 
we'll kind of have to wait and see uh, how this all shakes out. But the Nuggets are going to be without of him uh, for a little while. Michael Malone did laugh when he referenced the Denver Nuggets being second in defense right now. And I thought it was funny. He goes, right now we're number two in defense. <laughs> and I was kind of like, I don't know what's funny that he goes, it will be tested tonight because Miami obviously a good offense. I don't know. I don't know what, what you mean by that, but at least it was a funny little moment of levity. I mean, it's funny because he's just not happy with ever any defensive performance ever, but all this team does is keep teams from scoring 100 <laughs> points every single night. Literally every night, yeah. but like two, it's been a munder. Like it's just munder, 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 munder. Like they've been good at defense. I don't know what to say. Like Aaron Gordon has made a really big difference, and Jokic has been. Been very, fantastic. very competent. Like some somehow he's leading the NBA in total defense. I mean, it's it's um, certainly like some sort of anomaly, but all the same, like Jokic is not a joke anymore when it comes to defense. He sort of just has figured out how to be in the right place at the right time, the same way he has done on the offensive end. And he's like yeah. actually blocking shots and things. It's like it's cool to see. So I'm not surprised, but I, I get why he laughed. I think the chuckle comes more f- more so from the idea of it doesn't seem like we have much going for us. So right. for us to be second in defense, you know, like, and it's just with anybody, I think that it's like, why can't we get everything going at one time? Why can't we have our offense going and the defense? Or, you know, the defense going when the offense is going. So, I mean, it's just kind of like a, like, let's just try to get it together. But I know that, like, looking at the the season outlook and things are not looking right right now, um, it's kind of like, I don't know how we're there, but let's just keep it up. We have a super chat for Dev already. Is that what Ooh. you said? We got to know where they can buy your sweatshirt, Dev. You can buy it probably from Dev, right? Yeah. What's your yeah. price? De- uh, put DM Dev. Yeah, just DM me. <laughs> just, my DMs are open. We um, <laughs> you know, he mentions, and, and I actually agree with this. The team does thrive in adversity. That's been one of the traits over it. So, I mean, Dev, one of my questions coming in tonight is, Denver's down. Uh, you know, Michael Porter. They haven't been great. Do you feel like how do you think they respond to this one? Do you think they respond with just an incredible effort, uh, or do you think this might be a little bit of a recalibration game? I feel like the first initial one will be a recalibration game, um, but also I think that you'll see uh, more freedom on the court where maybe the offense gets to flowing. Just because you don't feel like you're having to make anybody happy, um, I think there will be times where it's like, okay, we have to make sure we give the ball to Jokic and try to go around that. But other than that, I think it's like going to be a lot more free flowing. Um, but with that being said, I think that it's a lot of guys having having to step into situations that they're not, you know, really used to. Um, they haven't had to be the guy that takes the shots late in the clock, or has to make isolation plays, or now somebody has to step into a playmaker role where they're, you know, trying to create for for other people. So I think it's just going to be people like not playing a whole lot that are now getting asked to to be more minutes which comes with way more responsibility, but it takes growing pains and time. I mean, the one thing that I'll say is that um, it's not like we've been getting a lot from Michael Porter Jr. so far this season, and replacing his production is not going to be that difficult. <laughs> we'll frankly. find out. Well, I mean, I mean, we're not talking about a guy. We're not taking 30 points off the floor. We're yeah, taking like, You are taking gravity away, though, and, and, sure. and occupying a good defender. I, I, like not, tonight, Jimmy Butler would guard Michael Porter. But he's probably now going to guard Will Barton, so it's like okay, that's you're not that's you're tough. definitely not wrong. I'm just saying it, it's not like we are lo- at this exact moment in time. It's not like we're losing like when we lost Jamal Murray, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's not unthinkable that maybe you know a player or maybe a combination of players could step up to bring to you what Michael Porter Jr. has brought to us this far, and you know we've been very moderately successful. <laughs> we're at 500. So Who do you um, think should needs to step up most? If you could name one well, guy. it's going to be Austin Rivers. I mean, he's going to be the one. Austin that's, Rivers. He's, he's, he's the one in that's the rotation stepping, He's taking his spot on the on the starting unit. Like, he needs to look like Austin Rivers in the playoffs and not Austin Rivers in the first part of the season. Like, if he is as unplayable as he was to start the season, like, that's going to be bad. I don't feel great if that's who we need to step up to stay afloat I mean, He's Austin done it, Rivers. man. Like, he's, I, I know he's looked I mean, he like, steps up, yeah. I know he's looked like garbage, but, like, I also know that what we have seen him look like in very high leverage situations. So to me, it's not unthinkable that he could. You know, it's also not unthinkable that we could start to see somebody like uh, Marcus Howard start to come off the bench and maybe start actually getting some You're thinking of this question almost more as in, like, who enters the rotation, I think. But I I mean more just who needs to now elevate their role. So maybe that means off the bench. But, Dev, who's your guy? I mean, uh, if you just go on Eric's side of this, 
a guy that has not played a lot that now is going to be able to play and make his case to get back in the rotation. Austin Rivers goes from being a guy that wow. has been <laughs> DNPs to now being a starter. You're asking him to do a ton and try to basically save his career in, in a way. Not mm. to say that he was going to be done, but there's not many more things going for him right now, especially if he just sits on the bench in a, a, a very, very – um, hurt Denver unit. So he's he's like the first guy that like comes to like mind. But also now Aaron Gordon has to step up offensively, Man. which is a but lot of pressure on him. A lot. That's what I mean, though. Can we we can't expect that. That's like I we? expect more offensively from uh, from him than I do Austin Rivers. I think Austin Rivers is more limited as a scorer. Well, he, but he's been in his career a scorer. I mean, so is Aaron Gordon. Uh, we've just seen. I mean, you're not wrong. This is both. This is like difficult because we're talking about two guys that one a guy that's shown that he has not been offensively capable this year right. and another guy that has shown like his best place on this team is to play a specific role that is not as a scorer and so both of those like propositions are very tenuous well i think denver's identity probably changes with this new group and i think so the first guy for me is pj dozier who i suspect will be a starter tonight i don't know if starters have come out yet usually we have a we have like voter or harrison on this one but uh, you know, I don't. So I don't know if uh, I, PJ Dozier is a guy that has not played great, but he also hasn't played a lot with Jokic. Yeah. Now that he's, that he's there, I think Denver can actually be better defensively with him on the court. You know, replacing Michael Porter, and then offensively, he hasn't been great this year. But now is a chance for him to play with Yoke and maybe get the ball popping a little bit. The other guy to me that has an opportunity here, and it's tough. Bones Highland. Yep. If you ask me, like, who do you have confidence scoring night after night after night? Not like Austin Rivers can have a night, but I don't. Every night, I just don't see it. Which is um, funny because Bones Highland has played three NBA of games. Of course, but he it's scored two points. Yeah, last it's skills. It's skills. <laughs> well, oh, he's not a lock to be there every night. <laughs> no, I'm I saying don't. like a guy that I most feel like has a chance here. So Jokic can score every night. Will Barton, I think, can score every night. Monte Morris is another guy that needs to step up, but he can score every night. I think you need one more guy that's like at least you know 10, 12 points a night. And Bones to me now becomes the most likely guy. Yeah. Whether he's playing with starters a lot bench or whatever, it's like hey. He his leash got a lot longer because it's like what do we we have no other options we have to have scores on the court at all time so I imagine his minute totals go up his minutes per game go up even on bad nights now just because who else do they have yeah I feel like this is his moment moment this is what you you work out for this is the the spot you want to be in the second unit just continues to get smaller and smaller because guys are having to step into the starting uh, lineup so now it's looking like he's going to be the guy with the ball in his hands. He has to be the guy that creates. He has to be the facilitator and the scorer, which is what he was brought in to do. So right. um, it's it's a huge opportunity and moment for him. Um, they did just come out with the starters. Okay. Jeff Green is stepping into the, the oh. starting rotation. He's the most like Porter, but it's still like he's tired. So, is so he who's our backup five now? <laughs> I mean, Zeke Naji, maybe. Maybe that means Zeke Naji's oh, in the man. rotation tonight. I mean, who man, knows? This is going to be a wacky night. This is going to be a really wacky. It's going to be a go, wacky. I think it might be oh. wacky couple of nights. I think it, I think we might have a few nights are we, that are wacky. Are we, look, are we staring on the barrel of a wacky season? We might be staring. <laughs> this might be wacky season. But you know what? We were talking about this earlier. Yoke leads the Nuggets to a win tonight against the top-ranked oh. Miami Heat. I am going to be insufferable online on the Twitter <laughs> sticks tonight. You better believe I'm going to be talking about MVP. I don't care if it's week two I and like a half. Your, I like I'm your going, pre. Like, oh, I'm so ready. But the, I guess this is like that uh, Michael Jordan clip. Like you're talking That's shit right. when the, when the oh, score is tied. Score, score, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, when you ahead five, when you down five. <laughs> That's a pretty good Jordan, right there. That was really good, that Jordan. Was really good Jordan. Not problematic like, in who any was way. That? I close my eyes. Mike Jordan. <laughs> Mike here. All right, we got to move it on. We went long in the first one, but hey, there was a lot of game notes. Uh, we'll move on now to. Fun. And guys, does it feel like the Nuggets are having fun out there this season? No, no. You, you don't no. see that same type of excitement. You don't see the celebrations from the bench. And I know mm. that that's what you know they thought was going to happen, especially with like Jamal Murray's like personality starting to come out. Right. Like, it, it's fun when you see it behind the scenes. This was like one of their better years behind the scenes where. You're starting to see like recordings, and right? Maybe there's good, like there's guys coming out with music videos, and I don't even think it's that. Like that. I, I want to keep it just to basketball because so, there is a flow and and a connection that you can foster. Sometimes I think you have to lean into it to be like, hey, it's this job, Eric, it, dream job, Deb, dream job, being here. But there are times when it's not fun, and it's like, and you kind of need the reminder. Mm -hmm. You need the like, hey. 
even the are the, you not having fun right now? Even the crappy. I'm not having fun right now. <laughs> even the crappy parts. You know, you need to be able to like celebrate and have fun. And I just feel like the Nuggets, for whatever reason, haven't been able to do that. It's been frustrations. It's been a grind. It's been a slog. Nobody's really like. You don't have a ton. Play the clip, Kale. We have a clip here from uh, the f- most fun team in the history of basketball. I'm gonna go ahead. And- Long, honestly. Do you so- understand that, Chet? That's. I think he's saying you're doing this wrong. Who? Adam? I'm not doing the job. <laughs> well, you're not. They're not having fun. They're not doing it in the right way. So I think that he's scolding the chat. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out. Me? No, I'm talking about the. No, I don't. Yeah. Uh, no, I understand. I'm okay. I'm, I'm shaming so you in confused. front of the. Our, I know. I'm you, that I in can't your face. be shamed. So this is not going to work. Wow. No, here's, <laughs> here, here's the point, though, guys. The, Steph Curry is honestly the goat at this as a teammate celebrating other teammates' success. He's just the best at it. He kind of almost like. Sometimes you, it's almost performative how much he starts dancing when other guys do this. But guess what? It picks everybody up. It picks the spirit up. And like Otto Porter made that steal and three. I believe this. You guys don't have to believe it. He made it because the vibe was just too perfect to miss. But I'm saying, here's what I'm saying. That Warriors team minus Otto Porter Jr. plus Kelly Oubre was a miserable sack of shit last year. Sure. Because they weren't making baskets. They were sure. winning basketball and making baskets. Like, if the Nuggets, Of course. There's a I'm chicken saying, and egg effect here. Of course, if the Nuggets were like 8-1 <laughs> and one or 9-1, and one, whatever yeah. the Warriors are, you're right. It would be easier. But here's my point. We want more passes. It, well, here's, here's, here's a great example. Do you remember the pass MPJ had to Yoke on the short roll? And then after the game, Yoke was asked about it. And he's like, yeah, he had two people on him. What do you want me to do? Yeah. I want you to <laughs> celebrate like Steph did. Like when Otto Porter hit the threes where he acted like. Because guess what? Otto Porter then. I'm telling you, he made that third three just on vibe. <laughs> you got to pick up the vibe sometimes. Like somebody needs to pick I up the know. vibes. It's the same with Malone, I feel, has a little bit of this, where it's like, hey, you guys won tonight by this. Yeah, but you know what I didn't like? And you're like, it doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> lean in a little. The team is a, at a funeral every single time they step on the court. Just pick up the vibe. This is my point. Do you think We're nine is- games in. I think the Nuggets need to elevate their vibes. Is there something I can do? Well, you could stop trying to shame me. Because it's a you few could just dial be, effort. Why don't you just be shamed and then I'd be done with it? Impossible. <laughs> it can't be. De- Dev, you were not a lot. Unlike <laughs> our co-host Eric, you were nodding along a little there. Oh man, did I just get a promotion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I really think that. Uh, I mean, winning it, it it really does cure all, and they have a lot of that going. But also, I think a little bit of it has to do with like expectation, and I feel like they yeah. they feel yeah. like there is an expectation. Uh, they're like title contenders and they're not playing like it so it's right. not you know it's not fun right now with the warriors they they didn't even make the playoffs last year and they're starting to see that success so it looks fun same with phoenix before you know last year everything started to to look really fun in the bubble because they don't have those expectations when the Lakers do, lakers do it everyone's upset right everyone is just mad but at least they try it <laughs> yeah. um so I, I feel like that the nuggets have to get back to playing without that expectation and Every other year, Jokic has, has talked about that. I think right now it's a lot of pressure on him um, to play so well, um, and everyone else is just trying to like buy some time. So until they get back to playing that winning style of basketball, I think it's just not going to be there. I wonder, like you gotta like I wonder what not having Porter on the floor is going to be like if it's if it's going to lift a little bit of a veil. Like he's been like kind of a bummer this whole year, Michael Porter Jr. Like he's had like. He's in the wrong place. He's the team's himself. relationship to Michael Porter as well. I don't want to put this all on one guy because yeah. I. This is kind of what I'm getting at is, it just seems like not all of the guys really totally they, they get more frustrated with his mistakes than anyone else. And I, it's a two way street. Like I don't just there's sometimes there is something too. I think Yoke is a little bit more like a Kobe type in the many ways than he is to a Steph Curry yeah. personality wise, where he just expects everyone to be on his level yeah and he's just there's a, he could be a little bit of a grouchy you know guy sometimes but i just i feel like there's a little bit of responsibility maybe it's not on yoke but just on this team to find the celebrations and the little things i mean they are i mean that they are the second best defense it, but that should be like an awesome thing but yeah. isn't it funny that you're saying that it's potentially a negative thing that Jokic is more like two of the most successful, most champion-laden basketball players of all time. Well, you know what's Like, funny? maybe everyone else needs to yeah. just, like, and maybe they're, like, maybe they're not supposed to be having fun. Like, Co- well, none I of those Jordan, teams I think, ever had fun. I think Jordan teams have, Jordan was fun, though. Well, he Kobe, was having fun. Kobe was more, he took it to a whole other level where it was, like, nothing else. But, maybe, but maybe these Steph guys Curry's do, also won three championships but in, you're like, right, like well, 73 games, so. You're right. Like, working here is a misery. I, <laughs> like, you just show up and you, it doesn't matter about if you're having fun. Just do your goddamn job. You tell people about the Nuggets. <laughs> 
<laughs> Eric's it's odd one today. Yeah. Really odd one. I don't know what's going on, guys. It's Monday. Are you drunk? I should be drunk. You I will be, be drunk. This is my promise to you, my co host. <laughs> All right, let's play a quick game here of buy or sell. Ooh. Buy or sell to preview some of the trends Ooh, that are happening podcast. around the NBA. <laughs> Look at this. Buying Adam, selling D-line. That's oh, appropriate. Man. Very appropriate. Well, no, no, this is, I'm looking at you and seeing in the reflection of my eyes, down. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, are you, I'm going to start with Dev on this one. Let, let the giggler gra grab some composure. The Nuggets, number two ranked defense. We've referenced it several, several times. Are you buying the Denver Nuggets now as this great defense? I'm buying it. Wow. I'm buying it just because I feel like that, that really has become their identity with them not having as much offense. And I think it's, it's really smart of them to do because you can't, you can't go opposite of what's working. If you're just trying to like do everything offensively, but you have no defense, you're going to still, you know, bottom out. And, and we've been seeing, we've seen that in, in years past. So right now for them to have so much emphasis and for them to put so much money into like Aaron Gordon and Jokic yeah. having so much attention on him, like becoming a better defender, um, then they have P.J. Dozier who, you know, just steps in and do, do things, does things. Will Barton's a great defender. It's a lot of defenders that are under the radar that it, are like they put a lot of energy into that part of their game. And we're starting to see it right now. Um, and their offense isn't working. So they have to have it on one like one thing. So I'm buying. I'm buying also like I um, this isn't like in years past where there's been like a weird like statistical anomaly like they're defending the three the best right, which is right. just people missing shots like i don't know they're they're gumming up the works in the middle like people aren't just like going in and uh scoring baskets with ease aaron gordon has been an absolute revelation he's shut down the top players that normally you know fill up the stat sheet which in and of itself i think has led to a lot of these munders i don't know like i I believe in the defense because I, I believe in what Aaron Gordon has brought. And I also believe in the transformation that Jokic has made. Like, I just, mm. I see it, you know, like I see him in, there are years past where you watch Jokic and you just like audibly groan at times. Like, oh man. And that just isn't happening nearly the amount of times that it used to. I'm selling and I'm uh. selling hard here. And it's because of the Jokic point, he's been fantastic on defense, but guess what? Michael Malone just referenced he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. You just lose Michael Porter when your offensive weapons. Yes, he hasn't been great. Uh, no. But at least he's – believe this. I think Jokic looks around and goes, okay, we're on game nine. Uh, there's, uh, there's 73 more of these, and you need me to be the entire offensive engine. Got it. Uh, you get fourth quarter defensive yoke now. Quarters one, two, and three, I just don't know if you can do it. And, like – I think it's a realistic thing. First of all, I do think Denver's run a little hot defensively. Like they've they've just been so fantastic. But Yoke won't last another two months being the best defensive but, player, the defensive yeah. anchor and offensive engine. I don't think that it's like really been him mostly though. I think he's benefited from uh, what a lot of other people are doing from the perimeter being more difficult to penetrate than it's been in the he's past. He's been so locked in though on that. He end, has been. Man. He has. Been. I'm just saying like I don't think that we are seeing like extreme effort from him that was going to lead to him being worn down. He looked down. dead tired in that last game. Well, there was yeah, a stretch yeah. in that last game where I was like, I, man, he looks I he mean, looks dead. You, no doubt, no doubt. But I, I, I don't think that's necessarily coming from the defensive part. Like, I, I don't think that there's much he can let up. Like, I, I, I know what you're saying. Yoke needs to play like 35, 36 minutes right now, probably for the next week or two. And to do that, I'm sorry, you just have to come. I mean, you know how it is, Dev. You come up to a game, they're always 40-minute running clocks. If you got, like, two subs and you're like, okay, cool, I'm going to get a break in the first half, second half, play a little hard. If you show up, there's no subs. <laughs> it's a tough team. You're like, we're going zone. <laughs> I'm not running down court unless I have to on certain possessions. Like, oh, you man. you pick your spots. And I just think Yoke is the NBA equivalent of that where he's like, I have to pick my spots on defense right now because I have to do everything on offense. I think he can. I mean, I don't think – if the question is, are they going to remain in the position that they are now? Right. I mean, it probably will dip. I mean, but I don't think it's going to just fall off a cliff. All right. Third worst offensive rebound percentage. They've always been a good offensive rebounding team. They're the third worst. Are we buying or selling this? I'm buying it. <laughs> really? The reason I'm buying it is they're not getting offensive rebounds and they're missing every single shot. Like what happens when they start making them? It's going to have to go lower. Okay. <laughs> so I just feel like That's I have funny. to. Dev's a goddamn right mathematician now. over here. Yeah. That's pure logic. Uh, I'm going to buy it also because I, the 
that second unit cannot get an offensive rebound for any reason. Well, that part is for sure. They, yeah. they, the Los a Dos, lot of these stats are actually heavily influenced dude, by it's the, the Los unit. Dos Verdes like cannot guard the rim and they cannot get rebounds. They yeah. they both they just kind of float around and are just like kind of like obstacles. I got <laughs> uh, it's yeah. tough. Selling it. I'm opposite you guys today. I'm selling it. Denver's a great offensive team. You go first team. next time. The Denver's a great <laughs> offensive uh, rebounding team. They haven't had a great emphasis on that. This has been weird. I think Denver goes to their security blanket, which is back to what has worked for them in the past. Offense is going to go up. Defense is probably going to sag a little. Uh, last one, guys. They are 25th in turnover percentage, meaning they only five teams have worse turnover rate than they do. Are you guys buying or selling this? I'm going to buy it. Um, I feel like right now their offense is going to be um, televised. Like, you know that they have to go through Jokic a lot. And I feel like he's going to take um, chances just because he's going to see a lot more double teams um, and guys are going to have to create, like, more space or to try to get open. I just feel like with, with so many guys out right now and just a big part of their offense, it just brings more focus on Yoke. And then I think guys are going to try to force feed him the ball to try to get their offense going, and it's just not going to work. So at least for a little bit, and then I think it'll open up. Yeah, man, I'm selling that. Like, Monte Morris is going to continue to give up four turnovers a game. I'm Please. Like, Jokic is going to continue to turn the ball over like he has. Like, no. It, they're, they're, they're forcing it in a lot of instances. A lot of it is because... Um, they haven't been able to rely on the outside shot at right. all. So Jokic is trying to feed it inside to make something happen, making like weird passes that like just aren't there, which is so uncharacteristic. Um, Jokic's best passes are almost always like in, inside out, like right. not, not usually the. Op- I mean, he can do both, obviously, but that's why he's turning the ball over. I'm selling that shit. That's not happening. I'm selling it as well. What? I think there's a more clear. <laughs> We're on the same page for this one. I think there's more clarity about what it is they're trying to do. Um, you know, less. I think they go back to basics, and that means fewer turnovers. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys. All right, last segment. We got to fly through some bets here, Dev. Super oh, chat. we do have a super chat. It comes from Scotty. Says, "Remember the time Adam quoted pout pout fish? Of course, how could we forget? He's a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. He spreads the dreary rays all over the place. Uh, seems like a good message these days. I would really, I would love if Malone dropped a pout pout fish reference. Scott, are you talking about Adam? Oh wait, for me, I've got, I'm being the pop pop fish. I don't think so. I'm just, I'm just, conti- I'm just shaming you again. <laughs> for my vibes, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> this is a setup. Eric set you up. Uh, so it is, it is a Nuggets setup. come into the game as a uh, one point underdog, one one and a half. Don't ever tell me what the chats say. I'd never read the chat. <laughs> they, I'll never don't tell ever me what the chat. The so uh, a big thing about this is this is a two of the best defensive teams in the league. Two hundred three is the over under. 203. That's really low. That is so a low. A near but, double Monday. But also, we just seen that last game, and they only yeah, got to did. like 180. That was like in, insane. Um, I I think it's just going to be some growing pains. I really do. I don't, I'm don't. i not high on the Nuggets in this game. I'm, I okay. really ain't. And, yeah. and on top of that, Jimmy Butler is playing like MVP basketball right now. So, so is Jokic. I, for sure. For sure. <laughs> it's a great point. A, a it's team. a really good point. It's multiple guys over there. It's it's multiple guys. Oh, so I'm not high on the Nuggets one guy Jimmy, tonight. another guy's Butler. Um, what I'll do for my lock of the game, I'll just go straight into it. I feel like there has to be a guy that steps up for Denver. Uh, I'm going to go with Aaron Gordon. You have to have him on the court at all times that Jimmy Butler's on the court. Points, also, rebounds, assists? Points, rebounds, and assists. And it's, it's pretty low. Um, it's not 18 really, and a half. 18 and a half. Like, I really feel like he's going to try to score. He has to score. He, he's it. now hitting the three-point shot. Okay. He's going to grab rebounds. And there's also another fun one, his his block. I think that he's going to get a block. He only needs one. And it's like hey, that is minus a fun 115. One. That is a fun that's, one. A, that's a fun one you could get on. But I think that this is an Aaron Gordon type of game. Okay. I'm Anything in on that one. It's one Eric? block, so if it happens, we're going nuts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're going big nuts. Um, big nuts. I can't wait. This big <laughs> Is that a manscape freak? <laughs> I guess so. uh, I still like Jokic three players. I, I give this out all the time. Yeah, he hits I'm not most time, it. more often than not. He only needs to hit two. Uh, last game was a game that he didn't even need to draw the defender out. Um, but he still shot four times. He just only hit one. Um, so I don't know. Like if t- to me, Jokic shoots about that forty percent range. So um, you know, if he'll hit two tonight, well, of course he'll hit two. He's he's top human. Do you don't have a parlay for us? Oh, uh, oh, you want to do a parlay? All right, let's build. Let's build this parlay. Well, you gotta go quick. All right, all right, all right. Okay, well let's let's single game parlay. Single game parlay. All right. I like it too much. See, this is a terrifying one. Okay, let's take. Let's start with the under. 
Two oh three and a half. Under two oh three and a half? You what you think it'll go over? I thought we were thinking Mundertown, USA over here. Man, I don't like you man, I don't like this already. You okay. already don't like it? Yeah. All right, let, let's let's leave points out of it. Okay. Let's leave points out of it. All right, let's go to uh let's go Jokic points, of course. Okay. Which points are we doing? Um Let's not do the over-under. Let's do it where you can actually just select the points. Let's go like 20 points for Nikola Jokic. 20 okay. points for Jokic. Okay. Uh, I'm going back on his threes. Two threes for Jokic. Okay. Or actually, we can just say one. One three-pointer made for Jokic. Okay. Um, then uh, let's do... Uh, what, do you, what else do you like? Jimmy Butler. We can leave it an easy one. A little two piece parlor. All right, all right. That's not great odds. Minus two ten. But that one feels like it's least it's gonna hit. Like if you it does if you, feel like if you're hungry hit. for a win. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we will be back in the post game lounge. Hopefully, it's a winner's one. See you. Let's then. go.